A couple of months ago, we took a look at a tiny little low power server called the Zima board from a company called Ice Whale Tech. Really cool little low power server, completely passively cooled, so no fan, had USB ports, two network ports, as well as a PCI Express slot, which is quite unique and allows you to add quite a lot of accessories. And today they've sent over a new version that they have called the Zima Blade, which is a brand new product from them. And yeah, quite excited to check this out. This is supposed to be a more affordable version of the Zima board. Uh, so let's see what it's all about. The original Zima board came in a couple of different configurations. You could either get a two core version or a four core version, depending on how much you wanted to spend. And that is a similar story with the Zima blade. It's either a two core or a four core version once again. However, this time you can get them in a couple of different configurations, depending on what you would like bundled with the Zima blade. Um, you can get different accessories depending on your kind of use case. I think they do a kit for a NAS as well as like an advanced kit or you can just get the bare bones kit. This is the Zima blade itself and you will get all of the kits include this uh, USB-C to C cable um, and as well as a SATA cable for uh, hard drives, which we will of course be looking at in just a second. For the world where digital freedom is the norm, not the exception. So you get two of those stickers if you uh, want to put them on your RAM for some reason. Initially, I can tell that it's got a nice metal heatsink, uh, like what we saw previously with the Zima blade, and there is the Zima blade. So metal surround on the outside, uh, I guess that'll be for the heatsink because this is, again, passively cooled, so no fan noise. And yeah, it's got this like kind of clear two-piece enclosure where the main section is like a clear plastic with some graphics over the top to kind of give it a futuristic sort of vibe. Actually, maybe it's a three piece. On the left hand side, we have a SATA port as well as power and another SATA port. So that'll be for powering something like a two and a half inch hard drive or a three and a half inch hard drive, or you could even do SATA SSDs. So two and a half inch SSDs. And um, so up to two drives on there would be quite good. On the bottom, we have our PCI Express port, which is a 2.0 port uh, by four. So that'll be good for up to two, gig two gigabytes a second, I think. Uh, and then on the other side, we have a mini display port, which is a 1.2, meaning it can do 4K 60 output, which would be quite good for like a media player or something like that. And then we have a gigabit ethernet port, a USB 3.0 port, which is five gigabits per second as well as a USB Type-C port, which can do power, data, and display. So you can do that all through the USB Type-C port. If you plug it into something like a dock, um, then you can do all of that through a single cable, which is pretty cool. I do actually like the footprint of this. It's actually pretty small. In fact, here's it in comparison to like a Raspberry Pi 4. So really quite comparable to the size of a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, the Pi 4 is just a tiny bit smaller, um, but not, not, a, not a whole lot. It's actually quite a bit smaller than the to the Zima board. In fact, here is the, the Zima board. Quite a bit smaller than the Zima board overall and quite similar to the Raspberry Pi. Although the Zima board does have quite a hefty heatsink on it because it does have a more powerful CPU. Actually, I should explain the CPUs that you get with the Zima blade. So it's available in two versions. You get the 3760 or the 7700. The 3760 version is an Intel N3350, which did kind of confuse me because their marketing for this says that it is a dual core Celeron, which is true, but a 2.2 gigahertz boost. Although Intel says that's a 2.4 gigahertz boost. Um, and it supports up to 16 gigabytes of DDR3, but the Intel specs for that CPU says that it's maxed out at eight, gig eight gigabytes of DDR3, which is a little bit confusing unless they got a custom version of this. But then you get the other version, which is the 7700, and that is a J3455 CPU, and that is a quad core Celeron. Again, released in 2016, so quite a bit of an older CPU, which I would like to have seen uh, be a bit more up to date. But for the price, which we'll get into in just a second, it might just do the job. Price-wise, the dual core version starts at 64 US dollars, which is pretty compelling for the price. It's definitely an older CPU, but if we start to compare it to some single board computers, considering that you're getting the case built in as well as it's an x86 CPU uh, and some of the accessories that you can use with this, um, it's definitely quite a good price. For the quad core version, which I think is the one that I have here, it is 96 US dollars. 
um, starting at 96 US dollars and you can get the different kits. You do need to supply your own memory if you get the 64 dollar version or the 96 dollar version so you can choose between like an, an 8 gigabyte stick or a 16 gigabyte stick which is going to push the price up a little bit I'm guessing you just kind of pull up the corners like that oh nice i quite like these graphics on the top it kind of shows you where the the ddr module is going to sit and um, we get a glimpse into the into the socket there as well as some of the other components just two screws on that top cover i think and then hopefully it's just gonna slide off. Yeah, nice. With that top cover off, we get a better look into the internals. So first thing you'll obviously see is the slot for the RAM, which is gonna be a single stick of DDR3L up to 16 gigabytes. Uh, will fit into this slot. Over in the corner here, it looks like we have got a reset switch as well as a power switch. So maybe that would be if you wanted to make your own case with a power button and a reset button, you could plug them in over here. Quite good that they included that. Just two screws to take out for the heatsink. Um, so four screws in total and you've completely disassembled the whole thing, which is uh, nice. And our heatsink should hopefully now come off. Oh, there's a little connector here for a CPU fan. So again, if you wanted to make your own case for it, um, you could include a fan if you wanted to. There's a header right here for that. There's not a whole lot else on the backside. Obviously we have our J3455 CPU over here. I think it's also supposed to have 32 gigabytes of eMMC on board, which is gonna hold our OS, but I'm not actually seeing that anywhere on the board unless it's under that Ah, yeah, it's under the battery. 32 gigabytes of eMMC under here on the battery. Not a whole lot to see, so let's get it assembled and we can take a look at some of the accessories which Ice Whale Tech also sent over and there is a bunch of accessories. I hope they sent over some RAM that's inside of those boxes over there because as you can see, I have a big gaping hole here and DDR3 is a little bit older, so although I am quite a hoarder of tech stuff, so I could probably find some somewhere. <laughs> Wait, why am I putting this cover off? I'm literally talking about how I don't have any RAM as I proceed to put the cover on, thus blocking the RAM. This is a M.2 to PCI Express card. So this will be if you want to plug in like an M.2 SSD, you can plug that in straight into the PCI Express port. Oh, look, there's two slots on it. That just plugs straight in into the bottom of the board like this. And then that'll give you access straight into your M.2 SSDs. It looks like both of these can actually be NVMe drives as well. Um, so not just SATA based SSDs, you can have NVMe drives on here too. So that's pretty cool. Definitely try that. This is a 10 gig network card. So single 10 gigabit ethernet port uh, that's gonna plug in once again, right onto that PCI Express slot. It's gonna give you 10 gig straight into your Zima Blade. And if you like this 10 gig port, but you think I need more ports than 10 gig, but I want faster speeds than one gig. Oh, that's quite long. That's quite a bit longer than the, the 10 gig card. Oh, and there's a fan. Okay, so this is uh, not passively cooled if you use this card, but you do get four two and a half gig ethernet ports, which could be really cool if you had like a cluster of these and you wanted to link them all together, like a Proxmox cluster. You could have them all wired together with two and a half gig. Uh, along with some uh, ports out to your switch or a router, whatever you choose. And yeah, that could be a good way to upgrade the speed of this board and have like a little compute cluster with a bunch of these. And if the three SSDs that you got with this card wasn't enough, then this. So with this card, you get five SATA slots. So you've got four on the front and then one up at the top um, if you want to add even more. So that would give you a total of seven. Uh, SSDs or hard drives, I guess you could add with this card. Not sure you'd be able to deliver enough power to hard drives, so it's probably gonna be limited to like seven SSDs, which is quite a lot, you know. I still haven't found my RAM. I really hope it's in this one. <laughs> ah, my RAM. This is a uh, Wi-Fi 6, I think it said. Yeah, Wi-Fi 6E. I think the size of them antennas. Ah, oh, this is a little cute card. This is a lot smaller than the other ones. I don't think they expect anyone to just like kind of plug the cards in like this and just kind of run them like that. You would have to put them in uh, an enclosure of some of some kind, maybe like a 3D printed one. Oh, I lied actually. That's not the final accessory. This one is. So this, this is a cool one, is a little cage. 
So this is like a little open air, um, open air cage that the Zima blade sits in. So I think the idea is that you kind of sit the Zima blade up on top and then you can add some hard drives in down at the bottom. So you could add up to two hard drives in here. I guess you could get quite a lot of, um, of uh, SSDs in here. So this is a hard drive. You may be familiar with these. What size is this? 320 gigs. It's like a piece of history. Uh, the hard drives basically just slot in like this and they can sit on top of like your desk or in a cupboard or somewhere like that. Um, and then you could add all of your legally, your Linux ISOs you could add onto your, onto your hard drives here. One thing I do wish that they had done is actually given like uh, riser cables and then given you a way to mount these um, adapter cards inside of them. So like, if these kind of screwed in in from the top somehow um, and then had like a, a riser cable that you could link them down and then it could all be enclosed in this one thing. I think that's kind of a, a missed opportunity. I don't see any way to do that. Look how amazing that would be. You have your Zima blade on top. They're linked via the SATA cables to the hard drive down at the bottom and then put in our 10 gig card like this, screw it in and then a tiny little riser cable from the top to the bottom. How did they not think of this? And then say that I've got several of these um, and I've got the two and a half gig ethernet card, this one, just in there, like with the, the, with the network ports like this, oh God. Then say I've got the four port ethernet card in like this um, and I've got my storage, I've got my, my server and I've got my network. Then I've just got a little cluster. I can have loads of these beside each other, just sitting on the desk, rows of them. You could have like 10, connect them all via the two and a half gig ports. And you've got yourself like a little uh, Proxmox cluster or something like that. That'd be sick. The Zima blade comes pre-installed with Casa OS, just like the Zima board does. But it is also compatible with pretty much any OS you want. You can use pretty much any Linux you want. You can use Windows. It's just a regular x86 CPU. So anything that you can install on an x86 CPU should work on the Zima Blade. We'll quickly boot up into Casa OS and just take a look. We did look at it before in the Zima board video. So if you want a more in-depth look into Casa OS, then do definitely check that video out. We'll do a quick power consumption test while we plug it in. So see what it gets up to on boot. 5.7, 6, 6 watts. Yeah, pretty much pinned at 6 watts so far. 6.4, 6.5, 8.1. 8 8.1 is the most I've seen there. Briefly saw it peak up to 8.8 .8 watts during boot there, and then it settled into 2.3 watts. and been there pretty much constantly for a few minutes now, so that does seem like about its idle, about 2.5 watts on idle, which is really good for uh, an x86 CPU. Obviously the power consumption would increase a little bit if you had SSDs and some of the adapter cards plugged in, but that's kind of the base. And we should just be able to log into Casa OS now by just going into the browser. So I didn't have to connect to any display. It already comes pre-installed with Casa OS on the eMMC. And then you could obviously add your external storage if you want to. That's really cool. So a lot of the things they do are based on privacy and like hosting your own things in your own house and having uh, everything stay local. And after I created the account there, it immediately comes up saying it will get latest news feed from the internet, which might leave records of my visit to the site and you can kind of accept or reject that. So it's nice that they include those privacy features uh, right into the into the US. So yeah, Cas OS, you can see our CPU over on the left. It's saying it's using about two watts, which is pretty much exactly what we saw on the meter plus the overhead of the rest of the board. We have eight gigabytes of RAM and we have our storage. So it's showing 26 gigs total, which is about right for our 32 gigabytes of eMMC. Really simple to use Casa OS. Um, you can go into like the app store and just start installing apps. So if we want AdGuard, we can install AdGuard and it'll just start doing it. You can just leave it going in the background and it'll uh, start chugging away, installing AdGuard as well as some of the other apps. I think Home Assistant's on here as well, if I remember. Uh, yeah, Home Assistant's there, ESP Home's there, OpenHab, Plex, a bunch of others. So we can just install those. Pass OS is basically like a kind of like a front end to Docker. So it uses Docker in the background, which is gonna give you access to the entire 
Docker catalog, which is really cool, meaning you can just run Docker apps on here, much in the way that Home Assistant OS does with add-ons. Be really cool if they built in some more cluster features into Casa OS, because I think the idea is that you would run, uh, you could run multiple of these, like I showed with um, linking them together with the Ethernet cards, for example. It'd be cool if you could create like a, a Docker cluster um, using Casa OS and have that all managed for you or built in with some easy UI tools. Um, but yeah, CAS OS, really easy to use and uh, makes Docker a lot easier for people who aren't as familiar with it or don't have as much experience. Overall, I think it's pretty cool for the price. Um, it's certainly an older CPU, again, um, which I know people are gonna mention in the comments, but price-wise, once again, um, it is, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I think it does need, I really would love to see them create a riser cable for it so you could have it all kind of stored in that um, in that case, that'd be really cool if they bundled it with it. And then you could have, uh, it looks so cool, just like a bunch of them lined up together, um, all wired up together and create a cluster. I would love that. Um, but yeah, that has been the Zima Blade. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think they do have something else coming soon, which will be really cool to see and we'll definitely check it out. Uh, look forward to showing you that. Let me know down in the comments what else you want to see and if you want me to try and get some more hardware we can do for some some home lab look. I know we were also going to look at the R1 Pro that we took a look at a couple of weeks ago and I was going to do a full review on that but I've heard through the grapevine that there is going to be a new version of that very soon so I'm holding off and I'll wait till we get the new version and then we will do like kind of a deep dive into running a full home lab on some of these servers. But yeah, leave your suggestions down below of what you want me to cover and we can certainly do that. I'd love to do some more home lab stuff for you as well as the usual home assistant and uh, smart home content. Thank you so much for watching. Please drop this video a like if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.